Hi friends, this is Goofy Pentel. I've come for a special introduction today. Actually, tell me, who is the best friend of a man? The best friend of a man is his books. From where he gets his knowledge, his stories, his, his screenplay, is, you know, he comes to know what his world about. And you know, he comes to know about good and bad things in life. As you know, for thousands of years, we have, in India, have a treasure of uh, books and granthas. The granth means Mahakavya, like uh, Mahabharat or Ramayana, for that matter, so many other Upanishads, they were all written by some or the other author. And that's how they come to us for ages. They say, no, what a good saying is, Guru Govind dono khade, kake lagu paaye, balihari guru apno, Govind yo milaye. Yadi, you have to be thankful to the guys who write and bring the knowledge to you sitting at home. I have to introduce a book to you guys and the author, the young lady who has written this book. This book is Sabu. Sabu is a lovely book and is written by Devlina Majumdar, a young lady, brilliant writer. I'll just read uh, a bit from there. The year was 1937. A new movie was released in London called Elephant Boy. Across movie halls, audiences watched enraptured as a young smiling boy gracefully perched himself atop a giant elephant. An illustrious Carrier in movies followed, taking the boy to the echelons of Hollywood. The boy was Sabu. His real life was no less dramatic than a movie. Often, at an early age, he worked in the stables as the ward of Maharaja of Mysore before being discovered during the shooting of elephant boy. How did the young boy make the seemingly impossible journey across the ocean to the silver screen? How did he become India's first Hollywood star? Well, that is what is the answer in this book. I have great pleasure in introducing you to the young author Deblina Majumdar. Hi, Deblina. Such an honor to be part of your channel. And, um, you know, I've grown up watching Mahabharat and the character of Shokuni that you played was mesmerizing. So, Deblina, nice meeting you. I have prepared a small questionnaire for the people, my friends, to know more about this book. I want to ask you some things. How and when did you decide to write about Sabu? So this idea of the book Sabu actually came from a discussion which I had with my brilliant literary guide and agent Mr. Suhail Mathur and with noted Bollywood producer Mr. Sunil Bora. So you're wondering how it is that you know this person who had such a miraculous journey uh, from the stables of Mysore to the heights of Hollywood actually so little is known about him today. And then when I started researching, I found so many facets of his life which were larger than life and dramatic. And that kind of felt us think that maybe there is a story in this. So that was the genesis of the idea. How would you explain Sabu's meteoric rise from the stables of Mysore to the heights of Hollywood? 
So yes, Abu indeed had a miraculous journey from the stables of Mysore uh, to the very heights of Hollywood. The way I look at it is, it was a combination of three things. In the first was probably pure luck or accident that he was in Mysore at that time. The shooting of the film The Elephant Boy was happening in Mysore, which happened to have the right kind of jungles, elephants as well as the king's permission required to shoot there. And the director, uh, he really wanted a very natural um, character uh, you know, for that particular role. Someone who was very comfortable with animals. And here was Sabu, who was very comfortable with elephants. And when the uh, you know, crew saw that on the set, it was very clear you know, who would be the right cast. Um, this much was obviously luck. But what happened after that showed his adaptability. So here was this young boy who was in traveling to London without knowing the language or the customs. And he showed remarkable skills in learning everything, um, in being comfortable, uh, showing a natural skill in front of the camera and not feeling overwhelmed by what was happening in his life. And that opened the doors for him. And then I think one more big shift which happened is during the World War. Um, he was still in London, but shooting was stopped. And uh, the shooting for one of his films actually moved to the um, United States, Hollywood. And that's when the other kind of big shift or arc in his, in his life happened when um, post that film, he decided to stay back in Hollywood and carve out a life there. So I would say, you know, it was a combination of luck and his own choices and uh, uh, the way he reacted to those choices, which kind of explained partly his journey, miraculous journey. Of course, it was also the kind of movies which were made at that time and the fact that he was working with some of the best director producers at that time, um, which kind of helped him um, etch out a, a really uh, interesting journey for himself in the minds of the audience as well. Now, please tell me which in your opinion was Sabu's best role. So one of my favorite uh, movies um, which Sabu acted in actually was The Thief of Baghdad and for quite a few reasons. A, it was technologically quite advanced uh, for the time when it was shot in. Um, second also, he played the role of this thief called Abu and a lot of humor which he brought out in a very mischievous way that I really liked. Um, I think third is I read a lot about the history of how the movie was shot. Uh, that probably added to its appeal for me. Um, I also liked another movie which he acted in amongst many others, but I think this one, the story was very intriguing. It's called Black Narcissus. So um, I won't say more because it's a psychological uh, story, but that again, I think had a lot of appeal. Deblina, some of the movie Sahu acted were pro-British, while he also acted with Shaheed Odam Singh in a movie. Tell us a bit more, what do you make of this selection criteria of his? Yes, in the book I actually talk about the fact that uh, Siddharth Udham Singh actually played a small role in um, one of Sabu's earliest movies. Uh, so read the book to understand how and why that happened. Uh, this is for the readers. Um, and sir, going back to your question about um, what um, Sabu, what role Sabu really had to play in some of the movies which had a pro-empire stance. So first, I would agree, you know, the movies, some of the movies in which he acted were actually did have a pro-empire, a pro-imperialist stance. And uh, when I look at it and when I research this in terms of how much of a choice did he have in that, um, here's what I feel. So A, uh, he was quite young when he went from India to Britain and um, history was unfolding in, uh, you know, tremendously um, different ways at that time. So on one side, we had the freedom struggle really picking up momentum. On the other side, in a few years, World War II would start, right? So as a young boy in London, Sabu was seeing a very different side of history unfold in front of him compared to probably people who were living in India at that time. And uh, I think he was led a lot by the directors and producers and how they were kind of shaping his career. So he was very glad to be part of these kind of movies and, you know, getting the kind of adulation and the support from the audience that he was getting. So he was more focused, I believe, in terms of carving out a life for himself independently in, uh, you know, trying to hone the craft, the language, the customs and not thinking that much about the message uh, the movies were actually trying to portray. So that's how I look at it. <laughs> Working with animals is always tough. Even when I was shooting for Mahabharat with horses and elephants, it used to be real difficult. Sahu was known to work with wild animals. So tell me, how did he train himself for it? So yes, it's so interesting, sir, that you mentioned about Mahabharat and shooting with animals. I still remember some of the battle scenes. It was unforgettable. Uh, coming back to Sabu and you know the time in which some of these movies were shot and with real animals on set um, it's 
really really amazing what uh, you know skills must have gone into that um and there are brilliant descriptions of this you know some of that i've included in the book um uh, how much effort you know the uh, filmmakers had to go through to actually capture these shots and how brave the actors and the crew had to be on set as well sabu had a lot of the bravery in fact the very reason he was cast in this first film was of his because of his comfort and his bravery you know with animals even large very large animals like elephants and um, you know that trend kind of continued i think if you see some of the other movies in which he was chosen to be part of in the early part of his career they all involved you know him kind of being around animals and i read a lot of interviews also you know his later discussions about these movies and a couple of things i found was one the directors obviously took precautions there were uh, glass panes separating animals from you know the actors and um, he also talked about the fact that later in life post the war when the taste of people changed he actually found that these kind of movies were becoming more difficult to shoot in um, in the us especially and that was actually one of the disappointments he carried um, in the latter part of his life so yes i think um, it was very difficult and there's a lot to learn in terms of you know how these kind of movies were shot um, in the in those conditions and now please tell me how was it working with uh, book bakers literary agency and your publishers locksley hall publishing so i can say with full confidence sir that this book wouldn't have happened without um, you know the support of uh, mr suhail mathur of the book baker so i have been collaborating with him right from my first book the marketplace for murder his support his guidance his belief in me and his ability to kind of help me think through you know areas which i'm strong in i think they have been uh, really really critical for me uh, to take the steps in the writing journey i come from a very different background a world of numbers of finance uh so as i came into this uh, world of uh, fiction and non fiction i think uh, swail mathur's guidance was invaluable for me and coming to locksley hall this is the first time i've collaborated with them and uh, i must say the support was tremendous at every step you know right from uh, thinking through the editing parts um, helping me choose the right pictures and you know guiding me through the process during the lockdown uh, i couldn't even meet the team face to face but it was in a tremendous level of support and to right now you know even thinking of the marketing parts of the book so i'm really really grateful to mr suhail mathur the book takers team and the locksley hall publishing uh, team as well for their support their guidance and um, really looking forward to working with them again oh, we have also heard that the book is being turned into a movie tell us how that happened So yes um, the book is being considered for a movie and the full credit for that must go to two people one is Mr Sunil Bora and his vision you know for this entire cinematic journey of Sabu's life I really admire his work and I'm looking forward to see how this will translate on uh, on screen with his skill and second is Mr Suhail Mathur of the book bakers and uh, his uh, vision right from the conception of the story uh, so it's just because of them that you know this book kind of is seeing the entire a uh, journey from a manuscript to a book to possibly a visual adaptation so i am really really grateful to them okay tell me now why should one read this book and what are the other topics that you have touched so why should one read this book so obviously i am biased but i would say uh, three reasons first read it if you love movies uh, this book talks about movies of the 1930s 1940s fascinating period you know the kind of movies that were made shooting with live animals uh, fantasy adventures you know the movies that came in post the war uh, the entire journey of you know change in audience taste etc i've tried to bring that um, you know as vividly as possible alive in the book so please read it for that if you love movies um, second is if you love history so this was a very dramatic period of time in history where we had not one but two world changing events potentially one was obviously within india um, india's struggle for freedom and independence and the second war was the second world war itself uh, which happened and it touched many countries and obviously many people and in the backdrop of these two events was this one person who was trying to live his life and make his choices and you know uh, traveling across continents and traveling into people's hearts with his movie so um, i felt it was like an epic canvas of uh, you know of storytelling uh, so read it if you love history and third and not the least read it if you love an inspirational story of you know someone who kept reinventing themselves and you know braving multiple different odds um he didn't have a particularly easy life expe- except for probably the early part of his um you know discovery and journey um and you know what happened and you know how he went through different dramatic incidents that itself i think is a learning and um, i definitely found it very interesting to learn from that so read it for that and at the end what more can 
we, the readers, expect from you in coming times? So yes, um, I am writing more. I love writing on history, on finance and on crime. Uh, so I'm exploring all three in my subsequent books and um, you know, research as well. Uh, so I'm right now writing a book for children, uh, introducing them to finance but using storytelling. Um, so that's something I'm really looking forward to. And post that, I'm doing a lot of research. I'm from Bengal and I'm doing a lot of research on uh, 1700s Bengal, which again was a very, um, um, you know, very difficult time in Bengal and a lot of things happened. So through that research, I'm trying to come up with, um, you know, different ideas and um, telling the story through the lens of different characters who live through that. Um, so those are, you know, books which I'm currently researching and working on and hope to write more. And crime fiction and non-fiction, I've written, written a lot earlier. And um, that's something which I love doing and I'm probably going to do again, again very soon. Thank you. So I would love for people to read uh, Sabu and uh, please share your feedback. And thank you so much, sir, for calling me to your channel. It's a real honor. And um, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, friends, this was Debrina Majumdar giving you the account of her writing. You must make it a bestseller this year. Thank you.